Welcome back to the Hot Tip Ed's Daily Pick Show here for Saturday, November 11th. Back for another action pack weekend here. The first college basketball and college football Saturday of the season. So it's going to be a pretty big slate. Got a lot of games to take a look at here. So we'll go jump into all of that here in a second. Before we do, though, looking back to Friday night's results, probably the bigger day for college basketball, um, you know, while well, college football season is still going on. Um, do only have one of the results for that card, Quinnipiac, the loss in the afternoon, though. So have to wait and see how the rest of those finish out. But as always, check out the YouTube community tab, the link down below. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed over on Dub Club, go get subscribed to take advantage of all of the benefits that it offers early ad for YouTube videos, dub club notifications every single time I place a bet, access to the Discord server, and of course, my recommended unit size. And when you use code CHRIS3 at checkout today, you can get your first three months for the price of one, only $19.99. Um, so go take advantage of that. Click the link down below in the description. It should automatically apply at checkout. And as always, I truly appreciate all you guys who have signed up. You allow me to keep doing this. You keep the channel alive. And without you, none of this would be possible. So thank you all so much. And let's get into Saturday's show. And we start today's show off in college basketball, an early game here, Texas State taking on Miami, Ohio for Texas State. Entered this game as the 167th overall team in the hot tip of power ranking. Miami, Ohio is the 186th overall team. Offensively, Miami, Ohio gets a slight edge here in this one, 135th overall. Texas State, the 166th overall team, but Texas State does edge them out defensively in the rankings 188th overall Miami Ohio the 241st overall team here entering this game um and an interesting game one of the first that I've looked at here where both teams have played division one opponents so definitely you know a little bit we can look at the stats I mean for Miami Ohio the loss to Evansville on opening night did a decent job shooting there in that game but overall was kind of a struggle they do end up losing that one um Texas State loses their opener as well against Little Rock defensively they looked pretty good but they didn't shoot the ball great there in that one um and really for miami ohio you know it was a team that last season that just really underperformed only won 12 games the first year under travis Steele. certainly you know going into year two here with a team that returns you know pretty much everyone from a season ago a season ago malik Leary, the only guy they really lose of any production on this team so definitely a team for miami ohio that i think we'll see improve and i think there's a lot of high hopes for this team coming into the season and they got to do better on the defensive side of things, though. Got to do better in the rebound department. Um, and, and overall, just, you know, have to, to play better on that side of the basketball than we saw a season ago. Especially going up against this Texas State team. But it is worth mentioning Texas State, while they regressed a little bit last year from the seasons of past we have seen here out of the last few seasons, um, it's not exactly the highest of hopes. I mean, they lose their top two scores from a season ago. And while they certainly have some talent on this roster, you know, definitely some experience, it doesn't seem like it's necessarily all going to be flowing right away. And I think we saw some of that in that Little Rock loss there on opening night. And as far as the model goes here for this one, does give the slight edge to Miami, Ohio at home, 71.25 points for them. Texas State at 67.74, a 3.51 spread in Miami, Ohio's favor here entering this matchup. Um, currently, the odds are a pick -em, opened at a pick -em, haven't really moved, minus 110 there on both sides. Um, a 6.39% edge on the money line, 6.47 or 6.47 on the money line, 6.39 on the spread. Some math being funny there in the background, certainly, but nonetheless, a very, very close um, game is what's projected here. And it is a Miami, Ohio team that I do love coming into the season here. I think they're going to be very good compared to where they were a season ago. And I think they get the win here against Texas State in game two, taking them minus 110 here against Texas State. Now we head to New York for this next one. Cornell takes on Fordham for Cornell. Coming to this game is the 253rd overall team in the high tibet power ranking. Fordham at the 113th overall team. Offensively, Cornell actually getting a slight advantage here in this game. 133rd overall. Fordham the 160th overall team, but a major advantage for Fordham on the defensive side of things. 98th overall, while Cornell the 327th overall team. As far as this one goes, it's, you know two teams that we were on and against on opening 
opening night in the same way we are here. We bet Fordham, I think it was nine, nine and a half, whatever it ended up being there. They don't cover that game opening night, end up winning against Wagner in overtime. Um, and certainly defensively, it's a Fordham team that did continue to play very, very good in that game. But we didn't see quite as much out of the offense that I was necessarily hoping to um, coming into the season. But I am giving them a benefit of the doubt. They are still a very, very experienced team. And I think as time goes on, as you know, the season progresses a little bit, we'll see a little bit more scoring out of this Fordham team. And on the other side of things, for Cornell, um, do end up pushing with our bad line against Lehigh. They don't cover the closing line, um, that is, but um, did a really good job, you know, pulling away at the end of that one. You know, Lehigh was very, very competitive throughout that one. Um, but it is a Cornell team that does give me some concerns here entering the season. Um, I certainly think they could struggle to score, especially going up against this Fordham team, even though they have been decently well and are pretty highly ranked on the offensive side of things. As far as the model goes here for this one, though, it does have Fordham at 85.28 points, Cornell at 72.59, a 12.69 spread in Fordham's favor here entering this game. We opened up pretty much at a pick -em. has moved a little bit in Fordham's direction. Minus 120 on the money line, minus one and a half, the current best spread out there. Um, a 25.59% advantage for Fordham, minus one and a half. And that's exactly what I'm looking at here. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt out of through that night one performance, that night one loss for us. Um, I'm backing them again here in this game because, quite honestly, I didn't love what I saw out of Cornell either, even though they did win that game, even though they pushed with the line we had. Um, I do like Fordham here in this spot, taking them minus one and a half here against Cornell. The next game I want to take a look at here on Saturday, Campbell taking on East Carolina for Campbell. Coming to this game is the 269th overall team in the hot tip at power ranking. East Carolina is the 156th overall team. Offensively, East Carolina does get the advantage here in this one, 167th overall, while Campbell the 228th overall team. Also getting the advantage defensively, 157th overall, Campbell the 277th overall team here entering this game. And while Campbell doesn't get a ton of love from the model here on the defensive side of things um you know i think certainly it's a team that out of last season we did see them have some success on that area of the basketball obviously in their opening night game against navy really was the defense that showed up big in that one holding navy to only 48 points in that game and while defense is certainly a big part of why campbell had success in that game i think it's more the tempo right obviously if campbell can slow it down and, and make you know the other team play the the crawling style of basketball that they like to play um it does certainly help them and allows them to stay very very competitive in some of those spots obviously campbell last season wasn't the the season that maybe they were hoping for um but nonetheless it is a Campbell team that comes into this year, you know, back with a lot of talent from a season ago. Do lose a couple of guys, certainly. Um, but Anthony Del Rio is a guy who I think really, you know, can pick up for some of the slack and in some of these losses. And I think he'll be, um, you know, a great guard here in his sophomore season. As far as East Carolina goes coming into this one, obviously also had some struggles a year ago. Didn't fare super well in the American Conference there. And in overall, East Carolina has had some struggles um, the past few seasons, certainly. Defense is also a big, you know, part of their game as well, um, and certainly will be a key piece to the success that they are able to have this season. As far as the model goes here for this matchup in particular, though, does have East Carolina as the favorite, 75.03 points to Campbell's 64.37, a 10.66 spread in East Carolina's favor here entering this game. But as far as the odds go, has actually moved a bit in Campbell's favor from the open. We opened at 11, currently sit at 12 and a half for Campbell. Only a 2.22% edge, certainly not a huge one compared to some of the other games we have looked at here for Saturday. But it's a Campbell team that, like I said, if they can just slow it down, similar to what they did in that Navy game, I think it's going to be hard for East Carolina to be able to score enough points to cover this 12 and a half point spread. And nonetheless, I think it's a Campbell team that can be very, very competitive here in this spot, taking them plus 12 and a half here against East Carolina. And we had Oklahoma for this next one. Incarnate Word takes on Tulsa for Incarnate Word. Coming to this game is the 332nd overall team in the high Tibet Power Ranking. Tulsa the 291st overall team. Offensively, Tulsa gets a pretty big advantage in this game. 196th overall, while Incarnate Word is the 301st overall team. But defensively, our Incarnate Word actually edging him out in the model. 314 while Tulsa the 200, or sorry, the 328th overall team here entering this game. Um, and for both these teams, quite a bit of turnover from what we saw a season ago. Obviously, Incarnate Word, um, you know, Shane Herman comes in. First year head coach here, Tulsa under their second year. 
Amir um, Okonkwo over there. So um, two relatively new guys and then two rosters who look tremendously different from what they did a season ago obviously Tulsa only winning five games last season certainly um, a change you know into some of the roster that is probably going to help them in the long run um, and, and certainly it did night one against Central Arkansas got the win there in that game Incarnate Word starts out with the loss to Texas in their opener um, but there were some performances for Incarnate Word um, that are certainly you know <laughs> promising for the season dylan Heyman, one of them um at the point guard position you know looked decent in that game against texas and i think we'll only continue to see him improve as the season goes on um obviously for tulsa the big advantage at least on paper in this game is going to come on the offensive side of things and one thing they did extremely well in that win against central arkansas was rebound the basketball off the offensive glass um, and, and, you know, they could definitely pay out here for them as they come into this game. Kobe Williams, um, you know, doing a great job for this Tulsa team as well. So a lot of question marks, certainly for these two teams um, with a lot of young guys. Um, but I think two teams on the rise. And, and I think this game here should be a fairly evenly matched one. I mean, Incarnate Ward, 65.35 points from the model. Tulsa, 72.16. A 6.81 spread in Tulsa's favor here entering this game. Um, but, I mean, the spread kind of speaks otherwise. Incarnate Word um, opened at 12. We currently sit at 13 and a half there. Um, a 15.74% edge for Incarnate Word here coming into this game. And really, are they going to be a great team? No, but as far as Southland teams go, I think it's one that we're going to see take some major steps up as the season goes on. And it's a Tulsa team that while they did look good in that opening night game, I'm just not sold that they're over some of the flaws that we saw out of this team a season ago. I'm taking Incarnate Word plus 13 and a half here against Tulsa. And we finished the college basketball portion from Chicago. Long Beach State takes on DePaul for Long Beach State. Coming to this game is the 255th overall team in the Hudson Bay Power Ranking. DePaul is the 122nd overall team. On the offensive side of things, DePaul gets the advantage here in this game. 80th overall, Long Beach State, the 282nd overall team. Also getting the advantage defensively, but not as big of an advantage there. 185th overall defensively for DePaul. Long Beach State, the 218th overall team. Um, and obviously, both these teams starting the season out with a loss. DePaul probably in worse fashion with the loss to Purdue-Fort Wayne. And certainly that game is really kind of the, the defining moment for this DePaul team is, you know, it's not what they had last season. I mean, what Tony Sellfield was able to do um, last season, especially in the non-conference, it kind of fell off a little bit as they got into Big East play. Um, has not started out great, right? Lost a lot of the guys that they had a season ago. Um, but even in that loss to Purdue Fort Wayne, there are some takeaways from DePaul that maybe it's not all lost i mean they did a decent job shooting in that game certainly not a good job shooting in that game and certainly their defense gave them no help um but it's a team for depaul that i think that's a loss that they can certainly build on and, and find some key takeaways as they move forward here into the season and as far as long beach state went obviously we were against them opening night against portland portland does end up covering that game um fairly easily at the end there a little bit of a sweat for any of you who were watching the live stream um but not a huge sweat um i mean long beach state was in that game certainly the entire time did a really good job pushing tempo which i did not expect out of them um getting up and down the court great but once they got up and down the court they kind of struggled to shoot the ball defensively did a decent job um ultimately they'll lose that one and as far as the model does go here for this game likes the paul at home 79.78 points for them long beach State a 67.84 an 11.95 spread into paul's favor here entering this game we opened up minus one and a half to DePaul. Currently sit at pick'em odds, a little bit better odds on the straight money line um, at some places. A 28.9% edge for the DePaul money line here entering this game. And while I certainly don't think DePaul is going to be contending for the Big East title or going to be a great team in college basketball this season, I think they're going to be a whole heck of a lot better than what we saw out of them in that first game against Purdue Fort Wayne. And it's a Long Beach State team that, yeah, when they're pushing tempo, can certainly be very, very competitive. I think they still have their own issues, and I think DePaul um, takes advantage of that and, and bounces back after the opening night loss. Do I think it's going to be a blowout? Probably not, but I think DePaul does win this game, taking them minus 104 on the money line here against Long Beach State. 
Now we start the college football portion of the show from Lexington. Alabama takes on Kentucky for Alabama coming to this game as the 11th overall team in the high to power ranking. Kentucky is the 16th overall team. Offensively, Alabama getting the edge here in this game, 14th overall, while Kentucky the 25th overall team. Uh, but on the defensive side of things, the model does like Kentucky, 13th overall, Bama the 20th overall team here entering this game. And obviously for Kentucky, you know, we're able to get the win over Michigan. Mississippi State last week, an impressive win um, after some of their recent struggles on the road in, the, in that game. Um, but before that, obviously, their conference, you know, 3-0 and start kind of fell apart, losing their previous three games to Tennessee, Missouri, Georgia. Um, but nonetheless, definitely some, some tough opponents. And outside of the Georgia game, did a decent job hanging in there. Maybe not so much with Missouri, but with t Tennessee, certainly um, it was a Kentucky team that hung around and at least the final score wise kept it close um, there in that one. And, and Devin Leary has not looked terrible this season. And I think going, you know, at home against Alabama in this game, we could see some success out of him. Obviously, though, Alabama has cruised through SEC play. Their lone loss of the season still being to Texas. Dylan Miller, sorry, Dylan, Jalen Milro um, has looked good um, here for this team this season. And obviously, Alabama is always going to be good, even when they're having a bit of a down season. Not even to say they're having a bit of a down season this year, but just in general. As far as the model goes here for this one, though, it does like Kentucky at home. 26.13 points for them. Bama at 23.83. A 2.3 spread in Kentucky's favor. Um, where the model currently sits at, which is the complete opposite side of where the odds are currently at. We opened at 10. Best odds currently is 11 for Kentucky, a 32.03% edge towards Kentucky here in this matchup. Pretty sure this is the biggest edge of the day um, here um, from the model. And it's a Kentucky team that, yeah, has not looked the best the past few weeks, but did get a good win against Mississippi State last week. And I think they carry some of that momentum here into this game and at least keep it close against Alabama at home. I'm taking Kentucky plus 11 here against Alabama. Now we head to the ACC for this next one. Georgia Tech takes on Clemson for Georgia Tech. Enter this game and see 39th overall team in the high speed power ranking. Clemson is the 33rd overall team. Offensively, Georgia Tech gets the advantage from the model 24th overall, while Clemson the 29th overall team. Defensively, Clemson on top here, 34th overall. Georgia Tech, the 45th overall team here entering this game. Um, and obviously, you know, for Georgia Tech, have not had the worst of seasons by any means. I mean, five and four overall, four and two here in conference play. Um, obviously, the win over Virginia last week, not an impressive team to beat, but North Carolina the week before that was certainly an impressive victory by them. Obviously, the Miami victory earlier in the season took some stupidity and some luck to win that game, but nonetheless got the win um, over a decent Miami team in that one. And overall, Haynes King has not been a terrible quarterback for this Yellow Jackets team. Um, certainly has over improved or over exceeded expectations for what I expected out of Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech at the beginning of the season. Um, and, and sort of the opposite for Clemson. I may have at one point said I thought Clemson could win the national title in the offseason. Um, and at five and four, I think that's, you know, pretty pretty much dead at this point <laughs> maybe the night one loss against duke um was enough to show us that but it is a clemson team that did get the win over notre dame last week and you know looked decent there in that game um and obviously klubnik has not been terrible for clemson either here this season um but i think georgia tech is going to keep this game competitive though the model does like clemson in this one 27.47 points for them georgia tech at 22.6 a 4.88 spread in clemson's favor here entering this game um um, but Georgia Tech getting quite a few points in this game has come down a little bit from the open. 15 and a half is where we open. Still a 14 and a half number flowing out there, though. So you can get the hook um, with the two touchdowns. 21.58% edge towards the Georgia Tech here in this game. Um, and I really do think it's a Georgia Tech team that has looked very competitive here these last few weeks. And I think we continue to see that here against Clemson. I think they keep this one close, taking them plus 14 and a half against Clemson. Now we head to the American here for this next game. Temple taking on South Florida for Temple. Coming to this game as the 132nd overall team in the high tip power ranking. USF is the 94th overall team. Offensively, USF getting a pretty big advantage here. 61st overall. Temple the 116th overall team. Defensively, neither one of them are great. South Florida the 121st overall team. Temple though second to last, 132nd coming into this game. 
And you got to start with that Temple defense when you're talking about this team. I mean, they do get the win over Navy last week, so give them some credit. Held them to 18 points in that game. Uh, But the four games before that for Temple gave up 55 against ASMU, gave up 45 against North Texas, gave up 49 against UTSA, and 48 against Tulsa. Not exactly the stat lines you want, and certainly not the greatest of teams to be doing that against. Granted, it is Temple, um, but nonetheless, the concerns that I have for this team on the defensive side of the ball um, are definitely some big ones. And that's not to say that South Florida has fared any better. I mean, gave up 59 against Memphis, 46 against FAU, 56 against UAB. The list goes on. I mean, really, these two teams have been very, very comparable in some of those regards. Um, but on the offensive side of things, South Florida has done a much better job. They've at least, you know, been more competitive, even if some of the games haven't been completely competitive, and have done a lot better job scoring points. You know, haven't been getting shut out like some of Temple's games. Um, and offensively, I think UCF in this game is going to have a major, major advantage. As far as the model goes for this one, does like South Florida, 30.82 points for them. Temple at 15.51, a 15.31 spread in South Florida's favor here entering this game. And as far as the odds go, does have South Florida as a touchdown favor open to seven and a half. We currently sit at seven, the best odds, 18.31% edge for South Florida here entering this game. Um, And certainly it's one of those games where neither one of these defenses are going to show up. So we're probably going to see a lot of points either way, but I do trust the South Florida offense just ever so slightly more than I do Temple. Um, And I think because of that, especially being at home in this game, um, you know, they're certainly the better team. And I think they show that here, taking them minus seven against Temple. Now we head to Norman for this next game, a little Big 12 action. West Virginia taking on Oklahoma for West Virginia into this game is the 27th overall team in the hot tip power ranking. Oklahoma, the third overall team offensively. Oklahoma comes into this game, the second overall team in the computer rankings here. West Virginia, the 15th overall team. Um, defensively, though, Oklahoma also getting the advantage. 15th overall, West Virginia, the 41st overall team here entering this game. And as far as Oklahoma has gone this season, obviously, after that win over Texas, has been a little bit rocky. Um, obviously, only a two-point win against UCF, and probably more notably, a loss to Oklahoma State and a loss to Kansas Two games that they certainly want to have back. Um, But nonetheless, it's an Oklahoma team that, you know, despite maybe not getting over the, the hump, not being a playoff contender once again this season, they've improved a heck of a lot from where they were a season ago. And you got to give them a lot of credit for that. I mean, Dylan Gabriel has looked very, very solid here this season. And overall, it's an Oklahoma team that coming back home in this game is going to be fired up, is going to be ready to play. And it's a West Virginia team um, that's also exceeded expectations this season. I mean, being bull eligible for West Virginia at this point is mightily impressive for the the news that we are hearing out of their program coming out of the beginning of the season. And you have two impressive wins here these last few weeks. The win over BYU, the win over UCF. I mean, heck, uh, Hell Mary kept them from having a win over Houston that would have given them a 7-2 and two record, the exact same as Oklahoma coming here into this game. Um, nonetheless, though, it's an Oklahoma team that at home I think is going to be very, very dangerous um, coming off of those pair of losses. And as far as the model goes, it's loved Oklahoma all season. It loves them again once in this game. 35.25 points for them. West Virginia at 18.86. A 15.39 spread in Oklahoma's favor here entering this game. Um, and this spread has actually come down a little bit from the open. We opened at 13. We currently sit at 11 for Oklahoma. An 8.59% edge towards the Sooners here in this game. And I really think coming off of those two losses, um, Dylan Gabriel gets this team going. And I think Oklahoma covers this one um, and, and really just wins this game in pretty big fashion. Taking Oklahoma minus 11 here against West Virginia. And we finish out the day with some more American action. Rice takes on UTSA for Rice coming to this game as the 88th overall team in the hot tip of power ranking. UTSA is the 86th overall team. Offensively, UTSA getting the advantage in this game, 51st overall, while Rice the 69th overall team. But Rice, the advantage defensively, 104th overall. UTSA, the 116th overall team coming into this one. Obviously, for UTSA, have been a dominant, dominant team here in conference play. 5-0 and on the season. Really, you know, have done a great job there. Frank Horace, Harris at quarterback, um, you know, has looked strong, has looked solid this year, and has really got this team going and in playing some very, very good football. 
But JT Daniels on the other side of things certainly hasn't had a bad season for Rice. And while they have a couple of questionable losses, obviously, you know, UConn not the best. Their last two losses against SMU and Tulane, um, certainly games that they were very, very competitive. And in two games that they ultimately probably could have won. I mean, all of their games, all of their losses have been relatively close, haven't necessarily been out of any of them. Um, and I think it's a Rice offense that really just does a pretty strong job of keeping them in some of these games um you know as the season has gone on for rice though coming to this game projected at 23.48 points from the model utsa 27.29 a 3.78 spread in utsa's favor here entering this game which gives rice a fairly decent advantage from the model here um the spread opened at 13 currently sitting at 13 and a half for rice a 22.38 percent edge towards rice here entering this game um and as good as utsa has looked the past few weeks like i said even in rice's losses have been competitive been able to keep it close and i think we see the same thing out of jt daniels here on the road in san antonio taking rice plus 13 and a half here against utsa and that'll do it here for Saturday's show. And if you want to see more college basketball and college football action for everything going on today, head over to hot2best.com. You can take a look at all of the breakdowns for all of the games from both slates over there. So, of course, got the NBA, the NHL, an NFL card tomorrow, a UFC pay-per-view tonight, horse racing action every single day. A lot of great stuff to bet on this weekend. So go take a look at all of that up on hottipbest.com. Also, follow the social links down below, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, to stay up to date with everything that's going on over there. As well as if you're watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on here for Saturday's card. And thank you for watching today's show. I will see you guys tomorrow.